looking for bottoms. I don't care that much. I know we're gonna know. Trust me, we're gonna know uh, when there is a, a really, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater uh, type of scenario uh, because we'll see you know gap down six, seven, eight points. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great uh, day of trading. A lot of stuff going on. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, just a reminder guys, we got two days left. That's it. Two, uh, only two trading days uh, left in the year, um, you know, it, it's now time to kind of reflect whether you're on uh, year one, year 10, year 20, or anything in between. Uh, it's time to reflect, right? What can we do better? What? How can we get better? What can we do to omit some of the things that are still uh, putting us in a situation of weakness versus a situation of strength? A lot of answers and a lot of things that every single trader has been going through or going through or will go through. Uh, time is obviously the answer that will cure all. Like I said, I was a much better trader year 10 than I was year one. I was a much better trader year 20 than I was year 10, and yada, 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 I'm going on my 24th year. So time will cure all, but towards the end of the year, you know, it's if you've been kind of stuck on neutral, right, and you're trading two, three, four years, and you just can't get going, and you're, and you're still stuck in that uh, social media, you know, you know, spin cycle, right? You know, trading the hot stock of the day or the low flow of the day or this, that, and the third. Uh, you know, again, look, there, there is an alternative method, right? Uh, again, I've, I've been saying this for a long time that I, I don't believe that pivots are a right feed for everybody, a uh, right feel. I just don't. Um, but I, I believe there's so many different ways uh, to trade in this market that has nothing to do with the masses, right? The masses look at the market exactly the same way. Uh, when I created the, you know, these pivots, uh, the PS60 theory, uh, back in 2011, okay, um, it was different, right? It's different. It's a different approach. Uh, it's a different approach to kind of viewing the market, to kind of digesting information, and it's based purely on technical analysis, uh, not on opinion. So if you are uh, interested, again, we have only you know a few days left. Uh, to take advantage of the current offering and then that offering goes away and then we won't have anything special till probably after the summer. So if you are uh, interested in starting off the new year, uh, diving into the world of pivots is a perfect opportunity to do so. So let's talk about the tape, right? Um, you know, pretty much, you know, business as usual, right? We lost the 50 day. Tell me where you heard this before. We lost the 50 day, we're gonna go lower. Are we gonna go lower every single day? No, but we're gonna go lower, right? That literally could be the update. I could literally record that and play that over and over and over again every single night until we reclaim the 50 day moving average because that's exactly where we are. It's very, very tough uh, to kind of come out with creative ways to, to tell everybody what's happening and to kind of keep on warning and traders and investors who keep on trying to find bottoms and names that there are no bottoms and names considering we're not even close to the bottom of the range. Again, here's the bottom of the range here from October the 13th and that's 254, right? We talked about when we broke the 50 day moving average, is there a possibility we get down to the 258 254 soft landing, absolutely, because that's the bottom of the range here. Now we're only a couple of bucks away from that, and about two dollars away from the 58 level, uh, and six dollars away from the 54 level. But again, things will get incredibly aggressive if we do lose the 1013 candle. Uh, that is the CPI, the first and original uh, CPI reversal uh, move that happened in the markets, and obviously we know what happened next. But that's kind of where we are, guys. And, and the idea that we are oversold is absolutely ridiculous. I keep on hearing this every single day. Again, when you're not even close to the bottom of the range here, well, now we're actually we're getting closer, but we're not even close, guys. You're talking about 254, right? That's what we're talking about, that overall uh, soft landing. Then you could at least make an argument if they hold 254, especially on a gap down, and they start reversal, at least you could turn around, have a trading area, right? Have a trading point of interest that if that area holds, you can get long off that area and use that as, as that low as a hard stop. But the idea that every single day you're trying to pick bottoms is a very, very dangerous way of trading. First of all, that's not trading, that's buying and hoping. The same way uh, you know, retail investors buy and hope 
in a bull market, they hope and pray to God, right? It's the only difference. They hope, pray to God uh, in a bear market when their position keeps on going lower and lower and lower. And if you saw, you know, if, if you saw today's action, right? And the, the scoreboard today, pretty aggressive, right? You got the Dow Jones down 365 points or 1%. Uh, you got the SPY, we'll talk about the SPY in a second, down 1.2% uh, and the tech heavy NASDAQ we, that we concentrate pretty much uh, on a daily, daily basis. That is our point of interest, uh, down nearly another 1.5%. Uh, but here is the most important part. And this is kind of what we talk about uh, institutional money flow. And even if you're not an options trader, like for example, I'm not an options trader, but I use uh, option flow religiously now, right? Especially in the last three years. And they're telling you what the big money is being bet. They're telling me, uh, they're telling me, they're giving you every single point of color that they're, they're they're betting institutional money size on where they believe the stock is going to be short term. And when you look at uh, the individual names today, you'll see some pretty big standout bets, right? Let's lead off with Apple, for example, right? So Apple, as you guys remember, broke down a couple of weeks ago. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal trade, three-day move on Apple, continue to go lower today, broke down. But they were coming today, when the stock was breaking down, they were coming today for uh, the 125, 126 weeklies, 125 weeklies, and then we started seeing, you know, for January's, the you know, 120s and below, very notable. Amazon, for example, that broke down today. Well, I don't use the word broke down. Continuation of the breakdown, and we'll get and we'll get to individual pivots in a second. They were coming for January 74 and January 70 puts. That's that's a big deal, guys. They're not telling you uh, the institutional money flow is not telling you that a bottom is should be you know should be tested, right? It's it's basically they're telling you they're putting out very very aggressive bets and very very uh, aggressive speculation that the correlation between the economy, right? You know the whole um, you know the, the whole um, you know the whole inflation, stagflation, you know transitory, right? All that stuff that they talk about. They're, not, they're telling you things are not getting good, right? They're not going to get good at least anytime soon. Hopefully, we, we you know we will. Again, everybody wants a good economy. Everybody wants job creation. Everybody wants a happy life. And obviously, uh, most people are long bias versus short bias. But at least the big bets, the the big banks are telling you based on their day-to-day uh, -day activity which way uh, they are making bets. So that's very very important. Another name, for example, like Tesla, right? So we talked about last night on Tesla. And I'm sure Kyler put in uh, the, the introductory clip that we talked about yesterday, uh, what Tesla needed to do for a possible dead cat bounce reversal, right? We talked about it last night, a washout, right? We, you got a washout situation. The stock was down five, six points this morning, was all the way down to 104. It went, it went red to green on the day, got stuffed pre-market, went red again. And when it went red, red to green in the regular session, Tesla had a phenomenal move, right? This is a really, really... You know, really big move here. It, it literally went from you know 105 all the way up to this 116, 117 level. But the notable part about what I saw as far as using option flow to kind of dictate what's going on here, we didn't see that massive. You know, they're coming for the 130, 150, 170 calls for next week, right? They were coming for the 115s. You know, they were coming for the 120s, and they weren't coming for two, three, four, five hundred thousand, a million, two million dollar bets. They were coming for 30,000, they were coming for 40,000. So it's, it, it really basically shows you that there is retail speculation money flow, but there's no massive institutional money flow making the same bets or thinking exactly the same way. Matter of fact, when the stock almost went red on the day, right? When the stock went almost red on the day, we started seeing incredible aggressive, you know, six and seven figure bets for next week and for next month of the 110s, the 108s, the 105s, and the 100s. Yesterday, we even saw the 85s. So again, where, where the money flow goes, that's kind of where the underlying security uh, will follow. In the case of Tesla, is it possible it gets one more day of a dead cat bounce? Sure, sure, absolutely. I, I think there's a shot if it starts building in the last next couple of days, maybe retest back the five-day supply. You know, again, stocks don't go straight down, as you can see it. Yeah, you know, Tesla does have you know, one or two sprinkled in days that are green, but overall the action is down. But now at least we have a definitive channel back to the downside. So if we do get one more update on Tesla tomorrow, you know, it'll probably get stuffed into the five-day supply within the next couple of days. 
But the most important point, point is we have the definitive bottom now set. So if they are going to start coming again for the 105, 190s, right, into the next month and into next year, we have a definitive line to trade back to the short side as well. So it's very, very uh, important to understand. So other than that, I mean, business kind of as usual. We have two days left in the market. We are getting some pretty good um, some really, really good setups for tomorrow in big mega cap names. And that's a very, very important point. Because again, when you're looking, you know, turning around and you're doing your research and you say, ah, Crocs looks good. Fantastic. Home Depot looks good. Fantastic. You know, I don't care about Crocs. I don't care about Home Depot. I, I'm sure a lot of people do, but that's not my thing. But when I turn around and my research for, you know, for the night is talking about Microsoft, right? Like look at Microsoft for tomorrow. Look at, look at this thing. Look how close this thing is. Amazon for tomorrow, right? Look at Amazon. NVIDIA that broke down yesterday was a beautiful, beautiful move. Uh, continued today. You know, I think, you know, they were, again, another name they were coming for puts. They were coming for 135, 136 weeklies with two days left. Let's see. Let's see if we can get down to 135, uh, 136. So there's a lot of good value on deck for tomorrow. Look at AMD, right? Look at AMD. Look how tight uh, AMD is getting. Netflix that got destroyed today. Again, we'll get to individual pivots in a second. You know they were coming for the you know, they were coming for the two seventies, right? Somebody came for the two forty four two forty January put. So the the options market is is screaming at the retail public which way they're betting. Is it going to play out that way again? Like I say, every single day, one day at a time, uh, one trade at a time. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Um, again, you know, really, you know, strong session, really, really strong session. I uh, guess again was the big breakdown in the video, 148.80. That was the 50 day moving average we talked about uh, on the weekend video. Uh, 148.80 for bills below can flush. The stock went all the way down to that 140.40s level. That was yesterday's low. And again, this was the notes from this morning on the Twitter feed. Fantastic move yesterday. Uh, gapped all the way down to 138.47 this morning. Uh, came back into pre-market into the 140.40s. If it builds below, can flush, right? Continuation. It got right back down to the 138s and stuff. You know, held that pre-market low, but really nice move, uh, two-day move. Uh, here is Amazon, 82.78 and 82 and a quarter is last week's lows. If both confirm, can flush, right? Here is Amazon, right? Here is Amazon. So it took out the 82.78, that was a low from these two candles, took out last week's low of 82 and a quarter, it closed right at the low of the day within 10 cents. Uh, I think it goes lower. Um, Meta, you know, Meta, you know, for some reason I was just watching Meta to the upside. It, you know, obviously never got close. Here is definitely what we discussed in last night's video, you know, for what it needs for Tesla to bounce. So I said, look, for experienced traders only, it's currently trading green this morning after gapping down to 104, right? Gap down to 104 pre-market. And then what happened was Tesla went red to green. I said, what I'd like to see is the opening, right? At the opening, then wash out the trap new short. So what that means is I wanted to see Tesla longs, the people who bought it pre-market, I wanted to see them pull those longs, take the stock red, trap shorts going green to red, and then next time through when the stock go, went green, right? That's what we got long, and that's, that was the whole point. What I'd like to see is an opening wash to trap new shorts. If it goes red to green the second time, right, it can run. Again, this note, this is not a pivot. This is an aggressive dead cap bounce. Phenomenal move on Tesla. For all you guys who caught it, congratulations. Great job. I thought there was a shot that this thing can go, and this is, this is the opening range here. You can see it. You know, I, I thought there was a shot Tesla could get to 120 today. It got to like 16 and change, which was fine. Nobody's complaining. It went from you know 109 red to green to the 116s. Nobody's complaining, but it was very, very odd that it couldn't you know get into the 120s. Again, is it possible we get a day two tomorrow? Let's keep an eye on it, right? I'll definitely, definitely keep an eye on it uh, above today's ranges, but you know, get a pretty good move uh, there as well. Netflix got absolutely demolished this morning. Uh, 280.70 if it builds below can flush. Again, they were coming for the January uh, they were coming for the January 70s and 240s. So here is the 280s, 70s. This channel here is the low of the rising 50-day support. It broke that low, traded all the way down to uh, 273. Uh, this thing loses today's channels. I think there's another 10 points in this thing in the near future. Uh, QQQs, again, 
263, 262.40. If it builds below, it can flush. Look at the Qs. So the market, again, that's the, this is what the market's doing. Took out the 262, 263, 262 40s, went all the way down to 259.70s. Again, I do believe when this uh, when this interval is all said and done, we're going to see you know, 257, 258 at, at the minimum uh, of this first initial uh, soft landing. There was another pivot on Tesla. It was a very small move. Uh, it went from 109.40s all the way down to like 10. It, it, it held basically the pre-market lows of 108.40. So that's it, man. That's it. I, and I'd like to kind of, I, I, I wish for all the traders, not investors. Again, if you're an investor, uh, again, what I'm saying has nothing to do with you. You know, your time horizon is months, years, whatever the case may be. We're, we're talking to active day traders, active traders who are aggressive in the markets to trade both sides. Uh, I, again, I, if you are only um, a, a long bias trader, I, I wish I could have some better news for you. I do. Are you going to have days that you're going to have some dead cap bounces? Of course, absolutely. Like I said in every single video, nothing goes straight down. But again, keep this in mind, guys. Again, and, we, and if you were just watching this video just in the last you know week and a half, anything below the 50-day is generally bearish. Anything above the 50-day is generally bullish. For all you guys who are finally coming aboard for this year, again, take advantage of the last couple of days uh, offer. I look forward to you. I look forward to working with you in the new year. And with God's help, we'll see each other all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.